What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the jungle. I'm Thing One with Wild Rift University, and I have a pretty cool video Welcome with you today. To I was telling you guys I was going to make a video where um, I'm in a five man, and that's exactly what this is. So, this is a five man, just to kind of give you an idea real fast. Uh, once again, as you saw, I'm Grandmaster, um, I'm about four, 38 points, so basically. Um, high GM, and then uh, the jungler, he is about like 45 or something like that. So we have some uh, high level GMs in here, and then um, the other guys are just some are some other friends of mine that I'm playing with as well. And then we're just gonna go up against this five man group. So, first, kind of let me break down um, our team comps for you to kind of give you an idea of like what my thought process is and like what our goal is, like as a team. So First of all, real fast, as you can see, we have a Renekton, um, Oriana, Trist, uh, Morgana, and Rakan versus a Yone, Gwen, um, Soraka, Ash, and a Lee Sin. So, obviously, early, their bot lane is stronger than our bot lane because Trist is a late game scaling champion. And then also they have a Lee Sin, which is going to be stronger than Morgana early as well. And then Yone, if he's played correctly, he can definitely beat me early. But if you know, I play correctly, I can beat him. It's kind of like a skill matchup, I would say, overall. And then top lane, actually, to tell you the truth, I don't really know who wins that. I would assume that Renekton would win that um, early top lane, but I, I'm actually not 100% sure, to be honest, because I've never played the Renekton-Gwen matchup before. I know Gwen is pretty broken right now, but Renekton is an early game bully. So my kind of thought process just with this game right now is I want to play a little bit safe, try and hard farm, because I don't think they can match our scaling with uh, Trist, Morgana, and Oriana. We just do way more damage uh, late game than they do. And they're not super tanky, plus we're tankier than them, so... Even if, they, even if they do get kind of ahead of us a little bit, uh, we have the Renekton and the Rakan in order to tank us. So that's kind of like what my thought process here. And then obviously, you know, trying to just tell my team, because we're actually on comms right here. I was going to record the comms, but I totally forgot to record the comms. So that kind of stunk. Uh, here, I kind of made a mistake. So if you watch some of my other videos, I talked about like when you know a jungler's there to gank you, um, how to bait the jungler by approaching them, backing up, approaching them, backing up, and like stutter stepping back and forth over and over again to kind of make them think that you are um, you don't know that they're there. A waste of time, especially against like a Lee Sin. That was a pretty big mistake by me. Uh, here I kind of make another mistake. I knew the Lee Sin was up there and I path towards the top side of the river rather than back into the lane. Which I'm not really sure why I do that. That cost me my flash and my um, barrier, which is pretty huge against a, a Yone and a Lee Sin early. Um, so that, that actually is gonna, that it's going to possibly cost me quite a bit, uh, and that was a very avoidable mistake. I knew the Lee Sin was top. I knew they had vision of me right there. The Yone was there, and um, for some reason I still did it. The other thing that this does is now you see. Because of that, I'm out of mana, I have to back, and now the Yon's actually ahead of me in level, and he's ahead of me in gold. Uh, so I kind of just put myself in a little bit of a predicament there, I would say. Um, <clears throat> making the lane much harder for myself than it actually had to be. Realistically, this lane probably should have been a pretty easy lane, but because of my out-rotating and missing a freaking canyon minion, like a noob, um... I kind of screwed myself a little bit. And then also, just in case you don't uh, watch my videos regularly, I am a uh, jungle main, uh, but I do play all roles. Uh, mid would probably be my second favorite role here. Uh, I hard push the lane just because I know I'm behind and I wanted to try and buy items as much as I could in order to uh, try and keep myself even with this Yon. So that way he doesn't like, even though like I literally just got back to lane, since the Yon backed, I was gonna hard push and if I had enough gold, I was just going to buy an item right away. It was basically what my thought process was in there. Um, my, my next 
thought also is I, I would like to try and save my alt for the um, for the dragon fight as well, simply because my alt such a game changing alt. Like yeah, I could use it um, before the dragon to maybe try and secure a kill. If it's first blood, then yeah, that makes sense to me. But if it's not first blood, like I would rather have that um, that alt to help change a team fight. So, for example, like here, possible chain, we got double right on the carry and the fort. We got the Soraka. We almost get, man, the um, the ADC as well. But it was a little bit of bad um, focusing. I was kind of put between a rock and a hard place. <clears throat> I had to either choose between helping the Triss or uh, helping the Morgana. So actually, let's back that up just a, a quick bit. So... Let's kind of analyze this team fight real fast and uh, break it down. Because as you guys know, you come to this channel because you're looking for the high level breakdown of the macro and um, micro movements of the game to help you improve. So let's look at this fight as a whole. So first, we get a really good engage, okay? The Rakan goes in and everything, and then the Morgana follows up. We get right there, boom. We get a double shockwave um, from my alt right onto the carry and um, the support. Right now, everyone's focus should be right on the carry and the support. But let's watch what happens right here. Okay. The Yon makes an amazing play and targets all of us and stops us from basically wiping out the entire team. Okay. Now let's keep going. Watch what happens here. The Morgana starts to chase the Ash and the Soraka, okay? Not, not a terrible thing because he's trying to clean up that kill, okay? But, what, actually, I'm sorry, hold on, let me back up real fast. Here we go. There we go. So, we kill the Ash and the Soraka, or we kill the Soraka right away. My bad, so that was, that was kind of a mistake. We kill the Soraka right away. Um, but then the Morgana goes after them in a 2v1. What she should have done is immediately turned around and started focusing the Yon with uh, me and the Trist. But instead, she moved up top because she got the binding, trying to clear up the kill. Which, <laughs> it's good, but it would have been better to hit the binding and then focus on the Yon because if she would have helped focus with us, one, she wouldn't have died, and two, we would have cleaned up the uh, Yon as well. And they may have continued to try to push on us, but instead, we basically lose everything. The ADC had to run away because it was just too much damage on her right away. But if he would have used the binding potentially on the Yon, <clears throat> the other team may have come to try and back up the Yon, and then our ADC would have possibly had enough health to win. Still overall, a, a decent fight, <clears throat> basically an even trade, so nothing terrible. I think overall, you know, we came out ahead. Uh, what do we, we get two kills to one, or well, yeah, two kills, oh no, I'm sorry, they got two kills to our one. So not really an even fight, a fight that should have actually turned out really well for us. And as you see, we're now actually behind in gold which is definitely not a good thing because they have an early game team comp with two hyper carries. So falling behind to a team comp like this, which already is stronger than us early and um, scales not as well as us, but still scales pretty well. That's a, that's a pretty big, big deal. Um, here, we unfortunately uh, lose our Trish. She goes a little too ham. And um, we're not able to actually, well, it's, it's, it's more so like we shouldn't have gone so ham right there without the whole team being there because it risks the chances of us getting a dragon. Luckily though, you know, we're, we're able to make some pretty solid plays here. The Renekton gets a double kill and we're able to secure uh, this dragon. But very risky as well. The Triss should not have gone in right away. And chasing right there, I don't think was the worst idea um, because we're making sure that we shut down the, the jungler so he couldn't attempt to steal, especially against a, a jungler like Lee Sin, who's really great. His kit's really great for stealing objectives. So 
That one, I usually don't like chasing into the jungle uh, once you have, like, something secured. But totally, I I don't think it's the worst idea when you're going against, like, a Lee Sin as well. Uh, so that we don't have to worry about the steal. Here, steal his uh, blue buff, which was pretty huge. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> oh, my bad. So, right here, we, we did really good in the fight, but we also did really bad at the same time. So, let me kind of just, like, slow this down real fast. So, first thing that we do good is we stole the blue buff, okay? As a team, we should have stopped really fighting the uh, Rift for a second. And then just immediately quick kill the, um, the Gwen. And then we should have uh, focused completely on the Lee Sin. Or what else we could have done, actually, is that Gwen was probably dead. We probably didn't need all of us attacking the Gwen at the same time. We, uh, I could have, since that, that Gwen was probably dead, I could have probably helped peel off the, uh, Lee Sin. Because now the Lee Sin has the, um, the Rift Herald. And if they get first tower, that puts them back in the lead of gold and everything as well. So, that fight wasn't done super well it wasn't done terribly because like i said we did end up getting a kill but they also got um a gold lead on us as well so kind of what my, my thought process is going forward is like okay we need to try to make sure we keep eyes on the lee sin because he obviously has the rift herald and his primary goal right now and thought process is how can I get first tower to try and keep my team in the lead? <clears throat> um, so keeping eyes on him, best way to do that really would for us to be putting some deep wards in his jungle, which we're not really doing. Um, one of the things I've been, I've been noticing about a lot of my gameplay lately is um, I haven't been doing the best job at keeping wards in the jungle. Oh, this is actually kind of cool. So right here, uh, let me back it up real fast. So right here, uh, me and the uh, Morgana are actually talking. He's telling me to go aggressive to set up a gank to bait him into attacking me. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just going to go right in on him then. He immediately goes on in. It's stunned. We clear him out. I didn't have to flash there. That was um, a pretty unfortunate mistake. Um, but luckily, we still got the kill, which is pretty big. And Leeson, exactly like I said, he's going immediately trying to... Um, a kill they do get the first tower and everything so gold's getting pretty even again as well i keep forgetting that on the blue team morgana gets a great spell shield right there stopping the kick and uh here we actually man we actually play this really well i don't know how the uh gwen didn't get it but we got away just perfectly Morgana being a little more aggressive than she should. I'm staying around when normally I wouldn't want to stay around there. But one thing to kind of think of, you know, if your team is engaging, sometimes it's better to make a bad play as a team than it is to uh, let your team make a bad play alone. Simply because if you work together, you're, there's a better chance that a bad play will work out. Versus if you have a good play and nobody's working together, it almost will never work out. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work basically like all the time um up here sorry i accidentally like misclicked on a on this one right here so another thing uh for oriana mains out there what you if you're looking to fast clear your wave probably the best way to fast clear the wave is to throw your s1 through the wave pull it back with your s3 walk in the middle and then uh hit your s2 which is the fastest way to clear a wave now, the downside with doing that is it's pretty risky. Here, this is great. Okay, so watch what the... Okay, so watch how the Rakan goes top and I go this way. We're eliminating all the exit potentials of this Ash. And this is really good. So watch both these preemptives. Boom, got it. He knows he's going to flash, immediately jumps in and blocks his flash. Preemptive judgment. Um, it, it's, it's pretty big. That was, that was just a really great play by our team as well. Um, here, obviously, we need to be pretty careful because we don't actually have vision. And this is Yon, man. It's absolutely... I feel like every time I play Yon, 
I always think that I'm outside of the range of his um, alt when I'm playing, and then when I go back and look at the videos, it's like, wow, I'm literally just touching the very su like tip of it. And I get super lucky and survive there with negative one HP somehow. Um, and so this this right here, this was a good call. So right here, my jungler is like, yo, yo, everybody come to uh, Dragon. Uh, I'm kind of shot caller on my team. So I was like, no, 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 uh, Renekton, stay bot lane and do the rift. Or technically top lane, but you guys know what I'm saying. And let's do the Dragon. Uh, because I was like, we'll finish the... Um, the rift first and then me and the morgana can clear this that will make them think that okay there's no way they're doing the dragon and so they won't have as much uh, priority towards it and we secure here in the mid lane they they did the right thing by like distracting to make them think that hey we're not doing the dragon yet uh but they went two hand really they should have just been playing like defensive and uh focusing um here huge team fight um that was just totally blown so watch this okay so we're all right here all right the morgana uh went to clear her blue because she had no mana so she told us like hey i gotta get this blue first i have no mana makes sense so our job is to just defend the Lee Sin starts to run away we chase i mean look at this though if me and the if Rakan would not have alted here to go after the Lee Sin, but alted them right here, we would have had all three of them under tower in the Morgana alt that she just flashed to engage. And then I could have also been there, but me and the Rakan tunnel vision completely ignore this awesome play that was just set up because we're trying to chase the Lee Sin. I mean, huge mistake. Huge mistake by us. We probably would have got two, two of them. One for sure, two maybe, three if we got super lucky. It was a, um, it was a pretty massive mistake. Here, man, I, I hate, <laughs> I hate Yon so much. He, he, he literally kills me there. Like there, those are one of the ones where I thought I was actually in his alt, didn't get in his alt, but then his, uh, S2 sweeped and killed me. So, this was actually a, a good move. So, as you saw, the Trist, she um, jumped, placed her bomb. And in case you don't know, Trist, uh, your jump resets if you blow up your, um, your bomb with an auto attack. So, it allows you to uh, mobilize more. So, if you know you're about to blow up the bomb with a Trist and like one more auto attack, maybe, and you know you need to get further ahead, preemptively jump in front of that champion get that last auto attack so that way you can reset the jump and immediately jump further to where you need to go whether that's forward back left or right um just something to think about if you're uh playing trist trist is actually one of my best adcs i don't play adc super often uh but when i do play adc trist and and vayne are by far my best uh, adcs here okay this was this was really great so let me rewind this real fast. So when they're here in the mid lane, I'm basically telling my team right away, like, hey guys, they're here in the mid lane. We can make a fight. We can get a fight. We can do this. We can win this fight. I'm strong. I'm immediately pinging, like, we can do this. Time them to go. I see them going in, and I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I immediately pop it. The Renekton listens, goes in. We secure the kill. Excellent team fight right here. Excellent team fight. Um, Soraka's probably for their team the most important person to kill. Because if we can't get on top of Soraka, she's literally just gonna shred us. Um, here we obviously overstay. We're clearly not respecting the alt of the Yone this game, which is kind of like stupid of us, honestly, because Yone is such a broken champion. Uh, but we're not really respecting it. I'm not really sure why we're not respecting it so much. I think it also just slightly has to do with the fact that like people are learning like new champs, but actually if you, um, we're also pretty far ahead now, but if you looked at the start of this game, you know, we were pretty even and even behind a couple times. Um, but we started to come ahead like in the team fights, which is kind of how I felt we would because the AOE damage of Morgana and Oriana is pretty absurd. 
uh, especially because Morgana and Orianna are some of the hardest scaling champs in the game as well, especially if you're running like Gathering Storm on them. Um, so we're kind of getting to the point in scaling to where they can't really match our, our damage too much. And then we have really good CC with the Rakan. Um, and of course we have the late game scaling of the Tristana as well. Uh, we actually played about four games um, last night. We won two of the four as well. But honestly, we sh we should have won. We should have won all of them. There there was some really big mishaps and mistakes, and, uh, things that just should not have happened in some of those fights that uh, caused us to not win them all. Uh, here. Let's kind of go back and reanalyze this fight real fast. Uh, I kind of got on a little tangent there talking about some other stuff. So, okay. Here, let's let's look at the fight. Okay, first of all, it's smart that the Rakan went in. The Rakan immediately ulted in in everything. Um, our one downside is our Morgana's not with us. So right now it's a 4v4, but realistically it should be a 4v5, okay? Um it would have been nice if we communicated better as a team and we had the Morgana ready with us, especially since um, the Rakan was going to alt. Uh, this fight would have been absolutely shredded for them. However, the Soraka placed a really good uh, silence, which hits me uh, right away, as you can see, and it stuns me from able to get in there. They drop my alt on all four of them. Uh, but the, the Nekton does really great, goes ham, um, gets the kill. And the Yone, once again, is blowing people up. The Trist is getting her bombs off and blowing people up. The Renekton is doing great AoE damage. We're poking like crazy. And for some reason, um, with as far as they are behind, I kind of get what they're doing. They're trying to split push because they realize they can't win necessarily a team fight. But they also shouldn't be split pushing as deep as they are because they also can't win a team fight. So that's kind of like one of the mistakes that people make when they're split pushing. You have to try and go for like micro wins uh, when you're kind of far behind. Because if you push too far, it lets the enemy team to know to engage on you, kind of like we just did. Because like, there's no way that Gwen can get here. So it's already a 4v5. Uh, we win it hard because we're already ahead. And we know we're ahead. We have two dragons. Um, we're winning team fights. But they have to split push because if they don't get pressure on the other sides of the map, they can't break us up and hopefully try and get a pick because their comp is really based on a pick. And the issue, I think, with them was is they weren't utilizing the Ash Arrow and the um, Yone Alt together to, uh, to get picks. Here, we didn't get the, um, the Dragon simply just because we uh, were not coordinated as a team. We were trying to tell people to go in, but people were like doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. They get the dragon, but it really doesn't matter because they kind of overextended a little too much and we were able to kill Soraka and the Yone, which who are basically like the two most important champions um, in order for them to win fights for the most part. Because at this point in the game, Ash, she doesn't scale well enough to really be too much of a threat. And the Lee Sin's already passed his prime as well. So really, all their fear is on the Yone, Soraka, and Gwen. Yone, Soraka, and Gwen are obviously, you know, really strong. Soraka late game is pretty ridiculous. Uh, now we've broken all the lanes. Um, and there really just isn't anything else they can do. So overall, this was this was a really good team fight because, like, or, I mean, a really good game. Because it kind of shows, like, how you should play as a team. It is kind of, I don't want to say a stomping, because it actually was, we actually were losing early, but we adjusted our play style and um, our teamwork in order to come back. Because based on our team comp, our team comp was really late game, other than um, the Rakan, which really, I mean, the Rakan is pretty squishy early, but other than Rakan and Renekton. And we gave away, I think it was like three to one or five to two at one point, I can't remember. But if we had to adjust our play style, especially when you have like two hyper carries, um, a Soraka, and two like early game strong champions, it definitely make a big difference. Here, right here, I had to tell the um, ADC, yo, don't take the blue, take the red. Um, 
as well. So, um, but otherwise, yeah, the game basically, it kind of looks like a stomping, which uh, I don't really like posting games where it's just like a stomping. But the reason why I'm posting this game, it's more so because it's showing like how to work as a team. Um, and the two games that we actually lost, um, I thought about posting those games, but I didn't feel like there was actually anything valuable um, in those games because there was no teamwork. Uh, there was not going to be anything. Actually, let me pause real fast. There was nothing in those games where I could have shown you like, okay, this is how you work as a team. And even if I could have like talked about mistakes, it, it really wouldn't have been my mistakes. It would have just been conversation. I did make mistakes for sure. But it would have been more so just talking about like, hey, these were my team's mistakes. There's really nothing I could technically do here. Um, what I could have done is just talk to them about how could you improve and play differently um, as well. But they were harder games. So it was like a little difficult for me to kind of like micromanage what to do in those situations. Uh, let's let's go through here real fast. So this team fight. So we kind of had a – I'm not sure what the Rakan was trying to do, why – I think he accidentally hit his um, alt before he hit his jump. Um, and here I know if we kill Soraka, the game's basically over. So I immediately get that alt on her. Tell the team, like, we can still get it. I try not want to disengage the fight. Got it. Good teamwork once again. We're focusing. I totally messed up. If I would have played this right, I would have got a Penta, man. I, I was really frustrated with myself. Like, I easily could have got a Penta because I, I should have had that triple. I could have had the Lee Sin if I would have timed everything right. And I may have even been able to get the Gwen. Uh, so I was a little frustrated with myself. I was like, dang it, man. I, I could have possibly had a, a Quadra or a Penta right there. Uh, but I, I messed it up. Okay, so as you can kind of see right here, here's here's our uh, team scores. 9-2, and 3-4, 5-1-20, 7-3. So it was a pretty strong uh, win. Um, we were behind early, but we had good team fights and good coordination to get ourselves back ahead, which falling behind early, which a lot of, you know, to a Lee Sin is definitely dangerous. Uh, especially cause their Yone, I think was the one who actually was ahead, which is even more dangerous cause their late game champion was actually the one who was, uh, getting the kills. And anytime a late game champion gets some early kills that can be, um, pretty dangerous and we did a great job as focusing the soraka as you can see here kind of point out this this is also the reason why we won so look at our team fight participation we have a 68 a 71 i'm at 89 uh and then 50 and 82 okay our team fight participation is excellent our worst team fight participation is 50 percent of the time which is basically on par with their entire team. But for the most part, like we're fighting together as a team really well. We have great damage across the board because we're fighting the other team and we have great AOE damage. <clears throat> so that was made a big difference. Like when you're playing as a group, I, I really recommend. So actually let me pause. If you don't, if you always play solo queue, it is great to play solo queue, and I do think solo queue will make you a better individual player. But if you actually want to get like better at the game, learning how to play the game how it's supposed to be played in five mans is really the best way to uh, improve at the game because it teaches you how the game's supposed to be played. Um, and so that's why you can see you you want to work together as a team. These guys were playing, you know, they're a five man, but they're primarily like playing not as a full group and everything. So it, it really hurt them in the long run as well. Uh, I'll kind of show you a couple more of the slides here, uh, here in just a second. Just got to wait. Let me go here real fast. All right. So here's the gold graph, as you can see. So as you see, Early, we were actually losing, kind of like I was talking about. And losing to an early game team when you got like an Ash and a Lee Sin, that's pretty huge. But when we started to team fight right at the Dragon, because you see that's when everything changed. Right after the Dragon is when things started to change because we started team fighting. Understanding your team's win condition 
is what will win you games and playing around that. We couldn't beat them in the 1v1s or lanes because they're, they're just better pick comps and stronger champions early. But we knew as a team, once we start to team fight, there's nothing they can do to stop us. And as soon as we started team fighting and playing around that, we started winning. What they should have been doing is looking for picks in rotations of us moving around the map in order to shut us down. If they would have done that, it probably would have been able to keep snowballing their gold lead as well. But um, they didn't keep doing that. So that kind of hurt them um, as well. But sometimes that's easier said than done. Uh, you can see the XP graph. Quick glance. If you want to see any of these, you can just pause them and everything. But yeah, guys, that's basically the video. Thank you for watching uh, Wild Rift University. Uh, like, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or there's any other things you want to see, let me know. I'm going to be making uh, more videos as well, posting videos every single day. I'm going to do a counter video uh, talking about what champions counter each other. I'm also going to do a video here soon where I'm going to bring in top-level players. Uh, I got some uh, top-ranked challenger support players, uh, some top-ranked mid laners as well. Um, like the number five Galio, uh, the number three Zin Zhao, and uh, just other high ranked players, having them come on and talk about their champions, how they think, and the way they do. Uh, like I said, even though I play all roles, obviously I'm not the best at all roles. Uh, I'm going to have people who specialize in certain roles and certain champions and tell you, like, hey, this is how, because some people here, they want to one trick a champion. I'll have people who are going to teach you, like, how can you rank up being like a one trick? Um, how, how do you learn to play against matchups that are bad for you? And so we'll watch some of their gameplay, listen to them talk, see what they have to say. But thanks, guys, for watching. Um, appreciate you coming back to Wild Rift University.